So, Robert Carley, congratulations. You've just won uh, a uh, Canadian Screen Award for Best Original Music Score for a program for Still Life, Three Pines Mystery. Can you tell me a little bit about how the work went on that project? Well, it was a fun one. It's funny how um, these things happen, like, it seems like ancient history by the time you, uh, you get around to it being broadcast and then a whole year, a cycle of award ceremonies. Anyway, um, that film, it, it happened during a really busy time for me because I was working on a few, a few series as well and a TV movie came along that the schedules are often unpredictable so you don't know when it's going to land and it ended up landing right in January which is a really busy time always because you're coming off of the break and everything's due and everything's going to air in January so you're usually behind. And there wasn't a lot of time, but um, I had worked with the producer before, uh, Brian Dennis, Phils Platt, and Peter Moss are the creators of the film. And I knew them, and I think we had sort of a shorthand that we were able to employ and just cut to the chase. It was, it was a mystery um, uh, slash thriller uh, subject matter, so it wasn't like I was reinventing the wheel. I mean, I had to create suspense and drama, and by the time I, you know, over the holidays, I think I was doing melodies and coming up with all my themes. And it was just execute the score. It was actually a really rewarding process because we had an orchestra and we just, it was conventional in many, many ways. It wasn't, there weren't a lot of curveballs. It wasn't like we were working with, you know, a new broadcaster or a new producer. We were testing new waters. We were just like, let's just get this show done. We only have three weeks. And I had a nice uh, small budget for some real, real string players. And it always sound, it sounded great. And I really, really enjoyed the process, you know. And Peter Moss, the director, he's, uh, you know, he's a very experienced guy and, he knows music um, enough not to be dangerous, but enough to be helpful. <laughs> that makes sense. I know there's often a lot of back and forth that goes on between director and, and, and uh, film composer uh, and producer and film composer, all that kind of stuff. I guess if you've worked with someone before, you develop a bit of a short end, as you said, and there tends to be maybe a little bit less of that. Yeah, it's precisely. I mean, when you have a new, a new client or a new uh, filmmaker you're working with, it's like a new relationship, right? So you're, you're testing waters, you have to get to know each other, you have to... Uh, learn to understand, you know, their sensibilities, and so a lot of that, um, all, that kind of grand, groundwork was kind of done, which was, was a bit of a saving grace because I wouldn't have got the, the thing done in time. I think it was one of those. I think it was really shoehorned between two different shows. It's like, where are we? Gonna, like, let's put that. And, you know, and when you're in it, you don't even know. You emerge and go. Somehow I managed to get that thing done, but whatever. It was fun. It's a, a, a great thing that the phone keeps ringing to some degree. I mean, uh, in, in the Canadian industry, what would you say are the, the greatest challenges uh, faced by, by uh, well, by film composers and maybe more specifically by Canadian film composers right now? Yeah, well, you, you make a, a good point about the phone keep ringing. I mean, it's, it's difficult not to um, become preoccupied with that and just sort of just focus on what you're doing in the now and try to you know, do your best work, uh, whatever you're doing. And then, uh, you know, when things come along, if you're prepared, if you're ready, you hope that, you know, you're, you're firing on all cylinders and you can make it work. I, I think that's part of the challenge is staying fresh because oftentimes we have sort of dry periods where we don't work. And let's say for me in the summertime, I have a few months off and I, you kind of get out of shape. It's like anything, right? And so you want to keep yourself, your skills home and you want to sort of keep pushing yourself because I find it doesn't ever get, it gets easier in some ways, but it gets more uh, challenging because I think as composers, as we grow, we push ourselves more, we, we listen more, we, we just become more experienced. And so rather than like, you know, uh, saying it, it gets easier, uh, it does in some ways. I mean, you know, we, we know what we're doing, we understand the, the process more, but I think the actual composing part never gets easier. And I think it's always a challenge and you always want to push yourself and discover more. So that's, a, to me, that's a real big challenge, just keeping it fresh, keeping it interesting and, and keeping it challenging for yourself. What advice would you have for someone who's just getting into the industry? Uh, what would be the main sort of number one piece of advice you'd give to someone just starting out who wants to be a film composer? Yeah, that's a good question. I think there's a couple things. One is education. I mean, you really got to be smart and, and know your stuff. I mean, there's so much technology that's changing constantly. Uh, there's a whole lot of repertoire and just, you know, music that you, you don't have to know, but it's great to immerse yourself in more and more repertoire. So listening is really important to lots of stuff. Um, and uh, like I say, education. But also, I think the third thing is just trying to find your own sound and trying to do your own thing. It's very, um, you know, it's tempting to to, to try to, to emulate other what other people are doing because you know that's successful. And while a lot of producers are, are looking for that, they want just something that they know. I think it's really important for young composers to try to develop their own voice and to get a sound because that's really about you know about you and it makes you unique 
and it's why people are going to want to work with you. It's not because you can sound like somebody else, it's because you sound like yourself. And so that's trying to develop your voice is, um, always has been a really big challenge and always will be, I think. That's the big, number one priority, I think, for anyone, old or young composer, really. Yeah. With downward pressure on the uh, sort of advance money that comes in, how important is it for SoCan to chase down the back end for you? Oh, it's vitally important. I mean, I think everybody in this room knows uh, how important uh, that system is for our livelihood. Um, we, we can't really rely on, in some cases, the upfront fees anymore. I mean, it's just uh, budgets have become suppressed. Yes, we have technology to enable us to do things more um, efficiently and you know more rapidly, but that doesn't change the fact that you know we still have to live and uh, we have to feed our kids, and uh, so can uh, and publishing and all of those devices which have been put in place generations ago. Um, you know, we can't say thank you enough. I mean, it's it's so it's vitally important. Thanks so much, Rob. Really appreciate this. Thank you.